I guess just starting off, you know, I didn't I didn't know so much about Steph's story as far as uh, I, the things that I did know was we kind of in the same class, so I know how much of a beast he was as a basketball player right. coming out of class in '96, like and everybody that was in that class. So I knew that much about him, and then I and I just knew that his career in New York there was just controversy around it. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much, as, and I knew he was an all star. So that's pretty much what I knew. You know what I mean? But as far as like. Um, as far as like really wanting to tell the story, I'd say the first time we met him is when that hit, when it was like, this is something special, he's special. We had a lot of similarities in, in common. We all mm-hmm. had lost our fathers. We all come from underprivileged backgrounds, you know, low income families. So we all super spiritual. The spirituality thing is the thing that locked the key yeah, for, sure. for, for, for us, you know what I mean? It was like a, seeing a brother from another mother, you know what I mean? So yep. um, this, that we were sold, you know what I mean? And obviously it wasn't about us being sold. It was really about him trusting us to tell his story. No, I have no reluctance at all. Um, I think once Nina Bon Jovi, when she introduced these guys to me, she already had spoken to a variety of different people. And then she said, I think I got the people who are the perfect fit for the story. So um, once I met them, we hit it off right away. We all connected which was the most important part for me because, you know, when someone is telling your story, the truth is really what you want to be told. And these guys were really honest with their work and they really put their hearts inside of it. It wasn't just about doing a documentary. It was more about, you know, what they were trying to get out of it, the message that they were trying to get out. Yeah, I've always been in a spotlight and because of my brothers my brothers played basketball before me so i was always looked upon as this kid that played basketball and that knew how to play basketball so i was highly documented before but um being that this was the end of my career it was a full story it wasn't a story that was in a continuance this is the end so it was a lot easier for them to actually tell the story and to narrate it for people to have an understanding about the highs, the lows, the lows, going back and forth to the highs. Um, so it was a it was a little bit more interesting watching it for the first time and seeing it for the first time because you see your life being shown through the lens, but at the same time you see how it was narrated for people to actually get a feeling about what was going on through the story. I think, I think one, one thing somebody uh, was like, man, y'all did a, a basketball documentary on Stefan Marbury. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there wasn't a basketball doc. This was a, a family story. Definitely when we met the family and how, you know, his, uh, his mom and his um, brothers, how, you know, how they came up real spiritual, real in the church and, and you know, the things that they instilled in Steph was like, you know, incredible, uh, and the reason why he's the person that he is, and the reason why the story is amazing because of that. You know, his father, who put a lot in, and and just to see what happened to to his pops and in, in, in that situation, and for Stefan to overcome that through China, and me having a new family in China, that was, you know, like I said, the family story. Um, I think going to another country and being able to evolve past my thinking and what actually went on in America was a little bit different from what athletes experience here in America. Um, China, it's a place where there are 1.4 billion people and over 400 million people that play basketball. So going to a place where it's a basketball country um, and sports and how much they love sports and to be able to elevate and to win championships there and to be immortalized and to have uh, a museum. All of these different accolades are all part of the journey from playing basketball in the NBA, from high school, college. You know, they all entwine with each other as far as me getting to a certain point to be able to show my ability to not only play basketball, but to show how I was able to overcome so many different things from the challenges that I faced from playing in America and then leaving. So, you know, for me, those were some amazing high points in being able to achieve those accolades. It's a New York story. I mean, you know, it's a Brooklyn Coney Island story, but it's, it's by somebody that's from here. It's about him. And it's, so it's about the community. It's, it's about the community that's here in Coney Island. So. I think it's like a homecoming for it to be here is important. You know, I think a lot of people here uh, needed a chance to hear Steph's side of the story. They needed a chance to get some context behind um, 
who Steph really is, you know, starting from the family level, starting from the values that make him who he is and the elements that he grew up around, that all, uh, the media didn't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's the only fair thing now for people to be able to make a decision about who they think Steph is based off of now seeing this documentary. Thank <laughs> you.